what I want to get into is more what I do in a product demo. How do we distinguish ourselves from other people who are doing a product demo? So when we first pull up the product demo screen, you know how it comes up, the things that are important, things to consider in heating and air conditioning. First of all is maximizing comfort. And then there's the quality of the product, the quality of the installation. It goes through those types of things, okay? So first off, maximizing comfort. We want to make sure that this is comfortable for you in your home. That's the main reason why we're going to do heating and air conditioning for you. So I like to ask a lot of questions in this part just to kind of see what their problems are and the things that they're dealing with. And so these questions, a lot of times I'll ask these right after the warm-up. We'll go through and we'll talk about what issues you're seeing with your heating and air. Asking, is there anybody in the home that has allergies, for example? Do they have rooms that are hotter or colder than other rooms? These hot and cold spots that bother them. Um, is the equipment noisy? Do they have a lot of dust in the home? Okay. So these are questions I want to ask up front. I want to see what exactly are their concerns because I'm going to come back later on and help them fix those. Okay. So those are some things that you can do to build value in addition to what we're going to show you here right. is adding some additional things on like filtration, like humidification, okay. uh, like an EC and a motor to balance temperatures for them. Okay. So keep those things in mind as we're going through. So after we get through that, one I just want to focus on one part of the company story, or I mean of the product demo in HVAC that I think will help build some value. And that is as we start talking about what their choices are on equipment, I always do the same thing. And tell them you can spend a little bit of money on this, and you can spend an awful lot of money on this. Depends on what you want to do. We talked about some of the things already that go into price, the quality of the equipment that's used, quality of the installation, the warranties and guarantees. Okay. And like you said, you know, you cut corners in those areas, you can drastically affect the price, right? But like you said, you get what you pay for. Now in addition to that, let's talk a little bit about efficiency. For a furnace, your efficiency is called your AFUE rating, and that goes anywhere from 80% efficient to 98% plus efficient. Now obviously you're going to spend less on an 80% efficient furnace than you are on a 98% efficient plus furnace. This one you're going to spend more monthly on your bills than this one. This one you're going to spend a lot less. Okay? Now the reality is, is that most people, most of my customers like to be somewhere in between 96% for example. Because up here, this is when you're going to spend $15,000 on a furnace. Okay? Notice there's only a 2% efficiency difference right here between 96 and 98, but the price difference is pretty significant. So most people don't find it necessary to go here, most people like to be here. Okay. In air conditioning, efficiency is measured by what we call the SEER rating, Seasonal Energy Efficiency Rating. That runs anywhere from 8 SEER to 21 plus SEER. Now, if you lived in Phoenix, Arizona, this is what we'll be talking about as a 21 plus SEER unit. Okay? But here in Utah, we don't use our air conditioner 10 months out of the year. We're using air conditioning four months out of the year. So you're never going to recoup your costs from this. It's a lot less expensive to run, but you'll never recoup the cost because you'll be spending $15,000 putting one of these in your home. Now, by the, on the other side of that, the ACER units, you probably have heard before how air conditioning is very expensive in your home. That's because people typically have 8 to 10 SEER units in their home. When you jump up to a 13 to 16 SEER unit, they're very cost effective to run. Okay? So you're not going to be spending a lot on air conditioning for the home. And it'll literally, you'll be able to operate this for about half the cost as you are an 8 SEER unit. But again, you're not spending the $15,000 it's going to take to reach up to a 21 city. So this makes a lot of sense in Utah. Okay. Now some other things that go into this. Stages. I'm going to talk about stages and equipment that can operate in stages. And so we have what's called a single stage. Then there's a two stage. Okay. And then there's a modulating. So the difference between this, right now what you have in your home 
is you have a furnace that's a 100,000 BTU furnace. Okay? So if you set your thermostat at 72 degrees, for example, your furnace is going to kick on to 100,000 BTUs of energy, and then it's going to shut off. <coughs> when that temperature drops a little bit in the home, and it needs to maintain that temperature, it's going to kick on again to 100,000 BTU, and it's going to shut off. That's all your furnace can do. It kicks on to 100,000 BTU, or it's off. It's like a teenager driving a car. It's the gas or the brake. There's nothing in between. Okay. So first of all, what we've done is we've gone through a load calculation and we've figured out exactly what the needs are for your home. So you don't need a 100,000 BTU furnace. This is actually way oversized for your home. What you need is actually a 60,000 BTU furnace. So right off the bat, we're going to save you a whole bunch of money because every single time your furnace kicks on, instead of kicking on to 100,000 BTU, it's going to kick on to 60,000 BTU. Okay. Now I can put in a 60,000 BTU single stage furnace that will operate like this 100,000 or 100,000 BTU furnace. It'll just kick on and off as needed at 60,000 BTU. But if we go to a two stage unit, this can actually save even more money because if somebody leaves the door open or you come home from work and it's cold in the house and you turn on that <coughs> furnace, it's going to kick on to 60,000 BTU. It's going to heat the house up very quickly. But when you have those little fluctuations, and you're just trying to maintain temperature, you can also kick on to a setting of 36,000 BTU. Okay. If you look at this, this is nearly a third of what you're spending right now. It's a third of the gas that you're using right now every time that this kicks on. And so most of the time, your furnace is going to sit there and cycle at 36,000 BTUs of energy. That's going to save you a ton of money. Now we also have what's called a modulating unit, and that's where the gas can fluctuate infinite different levels of, of gas usage. That's what a modulating does. Now this is something that's pretty expensive. They, you basically have a computer on your wall that's running this, and uh, very high-tech, very complicated. Again, this is going to be spend $5,000 putting in a heating and air system in your home. Okay? Most people know they're never going to recoup the cost from that, so two-stage is typically what people do. Okay. Now your lower can also operate as a single stage or a two stage, or we can do what's called an ECM. Okay. So the difference being your lower would just be on or off in a single stage unit. It just has one setting, it's on or off, or it has a high and a low setting. But the ECM works a lot like the gas does in the modulating unit. We can vary the airflow, okay. infinite levels. Beautiful thing about an ECM motor is you can leave it on all the time. You can leave it running all the time. And it's very energy efficient. It's a DC motor instead of an AC motor. It's going to use a lot less electricity. This ECM motor running all the time is going to be a lot less energy than your single stage blower right now. It just kicks on when you need it. Okay. So what are the benefits of running your motor all the time? Well, first of all, when you run the motor all the time, it's going to solve that issue that we talked about, how you have these hot and cold spots in the house. Because what happens is the air is constantly going to be moving, it's constantly going to be flowing and circulating. It's going to balance those temperatures so those rooms that are too hot, the rooms that are too cold, they're going to start to balance. Okay, we're going to get those a lot closer together. That's going to make your house a lot more comfortable, right? Now, you also mentioned to me that you guys have some allergies, okay? So one thing that is nice when you have an ECM system and you have constant airflow, another thing we can do is we can add filtration to that and we can actually clean the air. We can continually be cleaning that air, taking out the dust and the dirt and the pet dander and the allergens and even a lot of the bacteria we can be pulling out of the air as that's cycling through. Now you mentioned that you hated dusting. <laughs> Would it be a lot nicer for you if we could really cut down that dust level in the home for you? Yeah, so that's why we can do using an ECM and a filtration system together. Okay. So looking at these options, what do you think is going to work best for you guys? 
what I find is most people are going to focus right here. Most people want to be somewhere in the middle. They like the idea of an ECM motor. Okay. And the ECM motor makes a lot of sense. And this is one way that we can distinguish us from other people is because we're not just coming in and throwing in an air conditioner and saying, this is our price and this is how we're going to compete. We have a better price than anybody else. We actually want to solve the problems. Okay. So again, as you're going through the warm up, as you're going through the survey, make sure you're asking those questions. What are the things that they want to fix? If they have those hot and cold spots in the home, really capitalize on them. And show them how we can solve that issue for them. If they have allergies in the home, if they have, if somebody has asthma, for example, show them how we can capitalize on that. And there are people that spend thousands of dollars putting a filtration system in the home. You know, if we can do the same by using an ECM furnace, actually cutting their monthly bills and at the same time filtering the air in the home and cleaning up the air in the home. That's actually a great selling feature and that's something other people are talking about. The other things we can do, of course, humidification. You know, I went into a gentleman's home who had, this guy had a collection of Gibson guitars. He had over 20 Gibson guitars, Gibson Les Paul guitars. If anybody knows anything about guitars, expensive guitars. This guy's got tens of thousands of dollars invested in these guitars. Well, they have to have a certain humidity level in the home to actually maintain and preserve those guitars. And so that was a big thing for him when it's in humidification. So again, you have to ask those questions to figure those things out and really capitalize on them. Any, any questions on any of this? So we talked about the teenager room having a closed door air can't move, mm -hmm. but then when we talk about the ECM, if the door is still closed, is pushing air into the room still going to circulate and solve that? It, it's do most rooms circulate. have a cold it's air It's better if they leave the door open. Like crack it open a little yeah, bit. Yeah, they're not going to get, obviously with the door closed, you only get a little bit of air flow under the door. And, and just because I don't know construction, I guess, as well as, as I'm wanting to, does every room have a cold air return in it? No. Okay, just the main hallways is what I'm remembering. Yeah, right? just main areas main rooms. And that's why with an ECM, if you're constantly cycling air, you're, you will balance temperatures. It may not be perfect. If they have the teenager that keeps the door shut, for example, you, you're not going to solve that problem 100%, but it's right. going to help. It's still going to help. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, okay. And you can talk about that too. It's best to leave the doors open. Yeah. Crack it when you're not yeah. in it. I have a question I ran into. Sure. Um, when it comes to those four inch filters, mm -hmm. you know, 25 by 25 by 25 by 4, yeah. I can't find them on our, I went through it yesterday, I couldn't find it twice. In our pricing? Yeah. Yeah, search media. And yeah, if you, if you just type media. Media? Yeah, M-E-D-I-A. Uh -huh. And you do a search on it, and then you may have to click that part over there that says show all labor or show all. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm talking history. about over on yeah. the pricing? Yeah, yeah but if you type media, you'll be able to do that. Also, Bundle. there are bundles. Bundles are well, really... They gotta, but will our guys, when they go in there, put a 4-inch in yes. for that? That will be automatic. They would know to yeah, do If you company. sell a media filter, yeah. they will do that. Okay. okay. So, <clears throat> bundles are really an important part of what we do. So, as you're pricing this up, we aren't really getting the pricing whole lot. But there are different bundles that you can do. So, if you search bundle, just type in BUN and do a search, it'll pull up the bundles, they'll be the standard, the, the gold, there's, there's like four Do they, they, they do a four inch opening without us selling a filter? They do a four inch opening without selling a filter. Yeah, you know, because know. some people just yeah. have those, will they do it, will they, when they put the... Well, probably not because they'll have to rebuild that whole area. I mean, yeah. you'd have to put in some labor for it. Okay. Obviously. So yeah. if they don't buy the filter, you still put in labor. Yeah. Okay. So what I like to do the bundles. If you do the standard bundle that comes with the media filter, thermostat, and the thermostat. If you do a gold bundle, it comes with a humidifier on top of it. Okay. So okay, if they so want humidification, sell a gold bundle. If not, sell a standard bundle. At what stage are you going into this explanation in your 10 steps? This is right when I'm doing product demo. So we've gone through and we've talked, we've run through a good section of the product demo. 
where we talked about the different problems and things like that. Um, and then I'm going to jump into these are your options on equipment. Now I'm also going to cover a lot of things in the company story like how we're different from other companies and how we do things. And one thing I always like to tell people, and I'll, I'll hit this in company story, the business model in Utah for heating and air is you get one guy who owns a company, he's the only licensed heating and air conditioning specialist in that company. He owns the company, he hires guys at 12 bucks an hour to go out and install. Teaches them enough to hook it up, turn it on, and collect a check. Okay? Then they're done. Well, the difference between Sears and a company like that, our guys are licensed heating and air specialists. They're not only going to go in and hook up the equipment and turn it on, they're going to check back pressure, front pressure, they're going to check refrigerant levels, they're going to adjust the gas and fine tune it so it's burning optimally. And so they're going to go in and do things in a professional way. And that's a big difference because, you know, gas, even from area to area here in the state, depending on where you live, that gas burns differently, and so you can't just slap it in a furnace and turn it on and expect that it's going to be running in an optimal level. You have to fine tune and adjust it so it burns optimally. Okay? So that's one difference that our guys are going to be doing things like that. And obviously, you can tell stories that go along with that. I mean, we have a ton of stories in this office <laughs> about improper installations, a ton of them. I mean, I was with a gal in Orem that had a four year old furnace and air conditioner. She'd spent $10,000 replacing this furnace and air conditioner four years ago. And the air conditioner was seized up. Needed to be replaced. She knew that. When I went and did an inspection of the furnace, her furnace was entirely rusted out. I mean, the way that they had installed this furnace, they hadn't done the, the uh, coil properly, the drainage system for the coil. And so as this coil is defrosting, it's leaking water down inside the furnace. And it completely rusted out her furnace. And I showed her, I went down and showed her, look at your heat exchanger. I mean, the thing's all rusted. That's how people get carbon monoxide poisoning. Heat exchanger gets rusted out, it gets a hole rusted through. All of a sudden, the exhaust is mixing with the air that's going throughout the house. And people have carbon monoxide poisoning. Okay, so here she was. Four-year-old furnace and air conditioner that she spent ten thousand bucks on four years ago. She has to replace the whole thing because they used an off-brand equipment and the way the guys had installed it, they hadn't done it properly. Okay. That's the big difference between Sears and other companies. It's going to be done the right way. Okay. Any questions on anything? Okay. So and just to be clear, here. you're doing this prior to opening the flash presentation. On no, it's, it's while I have the. Flash presentation open. This is just part of my okay. flash demo while I'm in flash presentation. And then about what screen are you in flash on product? It's about the midpoint. It's when it starts to, when you start to see the furnaces and air conditioners. Okay, so I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go through the comfort screen, the problem screen. Okay, I'm gonna go through um, to the point where I get to is showing them the air conditioner, it's showing them the furnace. Okay, that's where I'm going to be talking about this. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it's not magic. You could probably move it here or there a little bit and still be effective. But I like to do that on every single appointment. It says it's recording, but it's blank. Is there one's cap on it? Look at that.